What's going on guys? Um, so I got a couple things I want to do today uh, on actually both of my cars, on the boosted one and the daily one. Um, but before I do that, I want to thank all of y'all for subscribing. I got close to 250 subscribers. I know that's not a lot, but it, it means a lot to me. I thank y'all for subscribing and watching my videos. I'm just glad I'm, I'm able to able to make content and have people enjoy it. And on that note, I want to bring up I, uh, I actually got to meet one of my subscribers. I meant to, I meant to put this in the other video, uh, the, the Slammed Enough Gatlinburg video, but I forgot to mention it. I actually got to meet one of you guys uh, at Slammed Enough, and it was really awesome to see one of y'all and actually put a face to who actually watches my videos. Um, his, I know his Instagram name is SumnerDC5. Um, I'll put the link in the, the description and all that, but go check out his. He has RSX as well, and his RSX is really clean too. Um, so go check out his Instagram. Um, he's a really cool guy, and I'm glad I got to meet him. So now back to my cars um, for this one. Um, the clutch, there's something going wrong with my clutch. I don't know if it's, I'm thinking it's uh, maybe an air bubble in the line or something like that, but when I go to put it in first gear, um, and I go to take off before I even let, let go of the clutch all the way, um, it starts to grab, like the clutch starts to grab, and I haven't even let go of the clutch all the way. So it's like prematurely grabbing the clutch when I don't want it to. So I'm thinking maybe there's a bubble in the line or something like that. If it's not a bubble, then I think it might be my slave, my slave cylinder giving out and just not holding as long as it needs to, and that's what's causing it to grab. That's for the boosted car. What I got to do for the daily here is it has a it has a decent oil leak and I think I've pinpointed it when I looked at it the other day but let me uh, pop the hood real quick all right so she's a little dirty Haven't washed it in a while Get sick here. This. but she has a decent oil leak. You can't probably really tell on camera, but it's coming from the passenger side down in here. So it's down in there. I think I pinpointed it to this uh, the VTEC uh, sol uh, solenoid valve or something like that. The oil control valve, I believe is what it's called. It's this little valve on the side that controls the oil. And I got something over here. I don't think I can reach, maybe. Let's go around this side. So. This is what she's leaking, and I just recently put this down on the ground maybe a day, two days ago. Probably went closer to two days. So, in two days, this is how much oil she's leaking. So, she has a pretty decent leak. So I'll be seeing if I can fix that as well as my clutch today. So, that's what I got lined up um, to do today. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so this is what I'm gonna use to uh, leave my clutch. Um, usually the manual way to do it is have two people, one goes pump the clutch a couple times and they hold the clutch and then on the slave cylinder there's a little valve with a screw on it where you can release the pressure and then you'll close it again and they'll pump it again and they'll do that over and over until the, the clutch is bled. But since I only got me here for right now, I picked up this uh, brake bleeder vacuum pump kit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this since there's only, since there's only me here, I'm going to hook this up. There's a line right here where you hook to the actual slave cylinder, that little screw I told you. There's a little nipple on it, and you'll put that, that line on there, and that will go into one end of the canister here, and the other end, you have another hose, you'll hook to this side, and that'll go to the brake bleeder. And all you do is just pump up the, uh, the vacuum here, and then it'll pull, <clears throat> it'll draw suction on the whole system, and it'll drain, like slowly start to pump out the the uh, brake fluid or the clutch fluid and then when you do it you'll see little bubbles coming out and then when you do that you should make sure you maintain your clutch level that you don't let it get below a certain level because then you'll just let more air into the system so it'll slowly extract all the little bubbles from the system and that's what I think I'm having a problem with is, is the air in my, my system down here not being able to actually uh, extend the, the clutch fork down here so I think that's what's causing my my premature clutch grab there. 
But I'll be, let me set this up real quick. I probably won't film it, but I'm gonna hook it all up. And then before I go to pump it, I'll, I'll show y'all what I'm doing. All right, I got everything hooked up. Besides going down to the slave cylinder where that nipple's at. And the nipple's already, already loosened the nipple. And then this is going to the pump. I need to take my cap off. Right here, here's my clutch fluid. Looking pretty good. So I'm gonna start to pump it. And then you'll see the air bubbles come up through here and then it'll sit in this, this canister here. So let's see what happens. Let's see if you see anything good in there. You can kind of see it forming right there. So there's some, a little bit of air in there. Hopefully this will fix my problem. Yeah, that's a lot of air bubbles there. Okay, so I just got done finished. Just got done bleeding the clutch. This worked out perfect. Um, I think I got it good and decent enough. So all I need to do is take it for a text, test drive, which I'll do that a little bit later and make sure that it doesn't prematurely engage when I don't want it to. But yeah, I got this done. Uh, now I'm gonna move on to the daily over there and <clears throat> try to pinpoint that oil leak. Pretty sure it's coming from that valve, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pull it in here. I'll probably pull it right over here, but I'll pull it in here. I'm gonna jack it up, I'm gonna go from the underneath and see if there's anything else maybe coming from the backside. Because um, when you can look at it, you can't really tell right now when I should put it on the video because it's so dark in there. But I think it's coming from that valve leaking down, hitting the hitting the accessory belt over there, and throwing it to the back side. Because all back in the back side on that side is has oil on it. So I'm, that's what I'm thinking is happening. But I'm just going to jack it up, uh, jack it up. Look on the back side from underneath. Make sure there's no other leaks like coming from the oil filter or anything like that. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to get her all set up and I'll show you all what I'm going to do. All right, guys, <clears throat> got her jacked up on this one side. Got light here. I'm not sure how good this is going to work, but I'll show you all where this leak's coming from. Can't really get down in there, but hold on a second. the camera here but that's the that that cylinder right there that's the uh, I guess oil control valve that I'm thinking that's leaking if you look right below it you can't really see there's like a little puddle of oil there and then you see this whole side right here I'm trying to shine the light it has oil all over it all the way back here you can see down in here all that has oil all on the long side of it. So what I'm thinking is happening is it's dripping down from there. It's dripping from there. Here's my accessory belt. And it cranks down there to the crank pulley. So <clears throat> leaking on that and it's just throwing it all back here. So you can even see a little bit up here on the, the little stain right up here on the hood. So that's what's happening is it's just leaking on there and it's throwing it back here. But I'm gonna go under there and see, make sure that the, the no other places back here is leaking oil, like either the VTEC solenoid back here or the oil filter right below it, making sure because you can't see down on the subframe, but well, you kind of can. It's all caked with oil. All back here has oil on it. So I think this is the target here. So I'm gonna look, go under there, look at it. I might bring you all under there too, but I'm gonna look at it and then. If I determine there's nothing else back there, then I'm gonna take this out. And I'll show I'll show the process of taking it out. All right, so I'm up under the car. This is the back side. Looking at the back side of the motor, it's my downpipe right here. See my oil filter back there. And from what I can tell, it don't look like the oil filter is leaking, or it don't look like the valve up there is leaking. 
can't really see it. It's right up right there where my light's at. B Tech, B Tech solenoid. That's my oil. Oil pressure sensors right there. None of that looks like it's leaking. Um, and you can tell right here on the side, I just caked on oil so, as well as my subframe down here. It just has so much oil on it. And to give you a reference, this is my passenger side wheel. I'm looking straight up to the back side of the engine. So that's this is what I was talking about. I was going to look back here. But I don't see anything other than that one side of the engine. And like I said, that's leaking down. I think it's throwing it on the belt. And the belt is just throwing it all back here. So like you can see, my sway bar is right here. Sway bar. You see where the oil's caked up on it? It's actually about to drip all over here. So... I actually need to get this fixed pretty quick because this is my daily driver. So I do drive this quite often, back and forth to work and whatnot. So I don't want I don't want to run out of oil and blow the motor so overheat the motor. So um I need to get this fixed. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go since I don't see anything else here, I'm gonna go up there, take that solenoid out, and then I'll decide what I'm gonna do from there to see if I can prevent it from leaking. So let me get out from under this car. Back up on top of the car here, there's the valve. I'm going to, let's see, take this out. I need to unclip it, the clip right there. Go focus, focus, right here. And then I need to take out the, uh, there's only one bolt holding this in. So I'm gonna unclip that, take that bolt out, and try to find out why this is leaking. Um, I did buy, I did go to the store, and I got this O-ring kit. So, I think I'm going to try to find one of these O-rings that will fit better, and just to seal it up. Um, this valve actually might be going bad, that's why it's leaking this bad. So, I'll probably need to fit or replace it eventually, or pretty soon, so that it will actually work. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm actually not sure, but if that valve doesn't work, then my VTEC actually might not work. So, I haven't really, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell when you hit VTEC because all this is stock. So I have stock intake, stock headers, so it's kind of hard to hear VTEC even if you can try to hit it. So I can't really tell if I'm hit if I VTEC's hitting or not. Um, but I'm just going to temporarily fix it right now, and I think the O-ring will work just to stop it from leaking. And then later on I can go and buy another, a new one and replace it. But let me get that out real quick. I mean, it's one bolt in the clip. I'm not going to record that. But once I got it out, I'll show you what I'm going to do to it. Alrighty, so I got it out. That's what it looks like right here. So it's just a valve here. There's stem. It actuates less oil. I'm not sure how to tell which how it's bad or not. I'm just assuming that it's going bad since it's leaking. Uh, this the seal this ring right here. This is probably flattened out or old, getting old, so it's not doing its job right, stopping all the oil from going through. But let me see if I can. I don't know if I'll be able to replace this one if I have one that looks exactly this size, but I'll, I'm gonna check. I'll probably take this off, see if I can match one there. But what I was also thinking was putting another O-ring on this right here, just because this meets this this is where it meets the engine right here, the side of the engine, this surface here. So I might get a bigger ring to put around this whole thing and actually put it on this the outside right here. You can tell. So I'm gonna get another, I'm gonna see if I can get another ring just so it can be like extra backup. So I can seal this properly so it won't leak anymore. But this is what I believe is causing it. I mean, there's pretty and there's a lot of proof. If you can't see, you see the oil caked up or the oil puddled up right down there. That's where it used to go in. So that's, this is definitely the culprit. With all that oil right there and it's just dripping down on the belt. So. I'm going to take this off and put a new o-ring on there and then put it back in there and I'll probably clean up this side of the engine as best as I can and down there down there as well just to stop it from actually like all the oil that's already on there from leaking down on the ground more so let me do this real quick and I'll show you how I do it
All right, so I replaced this O-ring here, stock one that was on it, with a little bit thicker one. So hopefully that will work. I also put another one on here. You can't really see if you can tell, but this one right here. I put that one on it, just the next one like I said I was going to do, just to meet the, the, the bottom of this. The only thing I'm worried about is the thickness of this, the one, I, the second one I put on. I'm not sure if that's going to like affect the clearance or whatever of this piece because I know this goes when this goes into the block I'm not sure if this meets up with anything like inside internally so if I put this on it this gasket on here it's gonna be if it, if it did meet up with something it'll be it won't meet it'll be whatever the thickness of this gasket is that's how far away it would be because I put this gasket on it so I'm not sure if, if that will make a difference or not so I'm not sure if I'm going to run this gasket or not because I'm not sure if this butts up to anything inside the engine. So I might put it on there just to see how it runs, if it affects anything, um, and see if it leaks. If it does, if I do feel like it affects something, I'll take this gasket off and I'll just put it back on. Hopefully this the gasket I replaced, which was this one over here. This is the stock one. You can see how thin it was. It wasn't that thick. And then I replaced it with, let me see here, I think it was this one. I think it was this one here. You can see the, a little bit of difference there. So, this one's a little fatter. So, I replaced it with that one. So, hopefully, that just that alone will, will fix the problem. I did this just to be just, just as a backup. Um, but, like I said, I'll, I'll put it in there and see how, how, how the car drives. But, I mean, this isn't that hard to take in and out. So if it does affect the driving or whatever, or the VTEC, whatever you want to call it, because of this gasket, this extra gasket, then I'll just pull pull this back out and take this gasket off. But I'm going to leave it on there for now, see how she does. Um, so I'm going to go throw this in the car real quick and then clean, and clean the side of it off, and then she'll be good to go. All right, got it back in there. Cleaned it up a little bit. You can't tell, but... Cleaned it up, wiped the side down a little bit down here. Went the back side, wiped the subframe off a little bit the best I could. Um, so I got it all hooked up back up. So now I just basically gotta drive her around a little bit and then just over time just make, keep an eye on it and see if she's starting leaking again. Um, so I won't be able to know right off the bat if that worked or not or if that was the case. I'm pretty sure it was. Hopefully I fixed it. But I gotta drive around a little bit, so I'll keep y'all updated on that. Um, for this one, boosted uh, RSX, I just got to take her out for a test drive since I've already bled the clutch. Hopefully praying that it was only an air bubble, but it may be the slave cylinder or even the master cylinder. But I just, I just recently replaced the master cylinder not too long ago, so I'm hoping it's not that, but it could be that as well. But I'm thinking it's the slave or the bubbles, and hopefully the bubble or the air pocket was what was causing it. But... I'm going to get ready to go take her out for a spin. I'll take y'all with me. And maybe we'll rip a little, rip through some gears maybe. Maybe not. Depending on how things go. But I'm going to take her for the test drive. And we'll go from there.
All right, guys, that's it for this video. Um, we got the things I needed to get done. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed a couple pulls I did. Um, but be sure to just subscribe, uh, comment, let me know what you think about the cars, what you want me, what, what you want to see me do to the cars or anything like that. Be sure to like the video and thanks guys for 200, right around 250 subscribers and just stay tuned.